Welcome to this Zentangle Quickie. My name is Heather Hartwick Ladden. I'm a certified Zentangle teacher, and today we're going to take a look at the tangle DDD from CZT Barbara Dual Johnson. <clears throat> All right. So this tangle can be put in a grid. You could um, make a single line grid and create a border with it. All kinds of things. Do take a look at the more for in, uh, <laughs> for more inspiration link in the description section, uh, so that way then you can get some extra ideas, not only for how to use it but ways to uh, decorate it. What I'm going to do is just the basic tangle, all right. And then you can think of this as a as a fragment because, like, you can also. <laughs> turn it around once you're done, all of that kind of thing. All right, so this is one box of a grid, we'll say. And from the, we'll call it top and bottom, I'm just uh, about halfway, we're gonna draw a straight line, but the straight line's maybe gonna go a third of the way down. And then from the bottom up, same idea. I would err on the side of too short because the because in the next step you could make it a little bit longer if you wanted to. <clears throat> and the next step <laughs> is we're going to go from this line and I haven't decided which way. Um, you know, I think I'm going to come down. Okay, so I'm going to start at the top. It's the same stroke, just on different sides. You have to mirror it, which sometimes... I don't know about you when if you've uh, if you've had to do that with certain tangles, but it hurts my brain a little bit. <laughs> um, oh, and then two things about this: one, <laughs> you could go. Oh, let's see. Let me just show you, and then I'll tell you. All right, and I go. I, I'm saying it because I'm deciding. Do I want to just cut over and make a straight line? Oh, let's not. Let's just kind of move into it. And as you see, I'm coming across, and then I'm working into a spiral and whatever um however many rotations of that spiral that's completely up to you of course so what where i was hesitating was right here so you could do this a couple ways so i you know came out of the line still making this as if it's one thing and then curved a little bit over but you could just make a straight line just and then do it so if you want to have it maybe be a little bit more angular there just something to think about all right, so what we're going to do is we're going to do this on this side as well. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to come down and try my very best. I think I peeled off at the, uh, well, sort of, at about the same angle. And you'll see why that matters in a moment. And maybe once you see that, then you'll say, oh, and then you get your own ideas about how you want to do it. All right, I'm going to bring this down just a little bit like I did there. And as usual, I find it best to just not think, frankly, and just do. Oops. Except then I angled my pen a little bit weird. There we go. So let's go all the way here, trace over that. Okay. And there we go. <laughs> that is it. That is D, D, D. And on that, for more inspiration link, I think I think she shares a, a story. I I skimmed over it because I wanted to find out, okay, tell us about the name. And um, I, th I think that's in there. So if you're interested. Now, I, you know what? I will, just because this, well, well it's not quite the record for the, the quickiest quickie. But, um, but let me just uh, I'll point out a couple things. One, it, so part of the reason that I was thinking, oh, you could go angular here is because how you come off of this, you know, and into your spiral will affects, will affect, excuse me, will affect how this uh, center diamond comes out. And as you all know, it doesn't matter because we have course corrections. First thing is because it's untangled, there's no such thing as a mistake. So it makes it look, you know, organic, like somebody did it, uh, you know, or you could just want to have a whimsical look. And that's okay too, but there are course corrections, and so let's let me share that. So if let's let's just say you like I really don't like what I did, I don't mind what I did here, but let's just pretend. 
And so I'm going to make a straight line from here to here. And let's just do that on all of them. And that way we'll get at least some semblance of a, of a decent diamond. And then, oh, there is an idea. So I just kind of boxed that off with a line. And now I'm coming back. So like that, right? And then we'll do that on the other sides and see how that looks. Well, this one's going to be a little thicker, it looks like. Hmm. And so one of the things that I do is I'll almost trace over the edge, as you just saw, so I could even that out without creating more, more drama. And I'm going to, I'm going to readjust that in a moment. Well, actually, no, I'm not. <laughs> Here's what I'm going to do is because I kind of like the idea of having this open in the center. And one thing you could do is you could just could have just aurad the inside and on uh, the sample I will share in a minute. That's what I did. And then fill in the outside or don't fill in the outside. It's up to you. But so I'm kind of doing this almost in reverse of how I would normally do it. Kind of filling in, coloring in each side a little bit so that way I'm aiming for equal ish thickness around each side. But I mean, yeah, I'm doing just like I said, I'm running over the edge of the line and at the same time bringing it out a little bit more. It's like I'm scooching it. That's going to be <laughs> that's going to be my new technical term scooching, scooching the line. <laughs> I'm going to add some rounding here just because I felt like I wanted to do that. And then to try to do that without adding little bumps. And I'm using, in case you're wondering, because I, I usually use the 01, but um, I decided to use the PN. The PN is nice because if you're good, well, or, yeah, yeah, if you're good, or I just you need to practice at it. You can press down and lift up and press down because it's a plastic nib. You're not gonna you're not gonna wreck it. And so you can. This wasn't really even a great example. Let me go lighter, and then press, and then light. that helps a little bit. I wasn't going really light, but so you can get a lot of um, <clears throat> differences from this one. And then, as I said that, I'm gonna move to back to the O1 and do kind of the same thing I did here and just trace this line a little bit. We'll just make this a little extra thick here. I should make notes as to when I do course corrections on these videos so that way maybe I could compile a favorite course corrections <laughs> ideas. And then, so then the other thing that's kind of, as I'm looking at it, this is a little thicker because I had I adjusted it because I went a little weird with the pen. So now I want to trace over. And, you know, a lot of this is just having consistency. And I think some sometimes when I don't like a tangle, that's why. And it's usually corrected by, all right, well, you know, what what is it? And then, okay, can I make it consistent? And say going slow. And kind of trace over if you're worried about you know tracing over you know this is one of those things you don't have to do this is just me this is just me thinking this might be interesting <laughs> to share yeah okay so so there's that little bit on course corrections and again it's completely up to you let me share um what it looks like in a grid. And this one I did do uh, some extra decorating. So this one I did a uh, little perfing dots. And I this I just pushed my pen down. I just it's just a dot with the pen. If you do this bigger, like here, you could do little orbs or little uh, little pearls or something even, you know, on the side. You don't have to do it on the inside. You could do it on the outside. This is this is one of the things that it's up to you. Um, and then I, I put, uh, just aura this corner a little bit and made these little V's on either side. I thought that that looked kind of neat. Um, and then here I did, I aura and and uh, just with whatever the shape was. So if it's wonky, it's wonky and it's okay um, because I think it's kind of cool sometimes. 
another thing I did on this one, and not necessarily successfully, but I'm looking at it super close, is what I did was I, on purpose, went over these edges. So that way it, I thickened, you know, the outside, outside, you know, and then this um, almost in a row, just because I thought that that would look neat too. And I think on, on one of the samples that had something like that, I'm like, ooh, that's a good idea. And if you don't, that I just did by, uh, sometimes I just go out a little bit, and uh, like an almost aura, and then fill it in. But it has a neat look. It really does. So what a cute tangle. And I especially like it put, you know, um, smaller and, you know, in a row. And as I mentioned, you could use it as a border. <laughs> if I can get a hold of that. You know, so say you just do, you know, one box, you know, two lines, and then separate it and put it in there. And you could create a really neat border or a fill-in or whatever you want because this is entangled, right? Okay. I think that I think I covered everything. So make sure to take a look at the description section for for those links. And if you would like to uh, connect with me, there's a link to uh, my website and our Facebook group. We have a nice community there where we you know share share the stuff from here and from the classes that I do and 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 pretty much anything else is entangled. So with that, thanks for watching. And oh, like, share, subscribe, all of that. I, I really appreciate it. And I wish you happy tangling.